Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're gonna be talking about the SAT exam and specifically the math sections on the SAT. And obviously we're gonna be talking about how to prepare for the math sections on the SAT. And uh, this is a kind of a huge endeavor for many students out there, especially those that maybe don't like math so much, but the SAT exam along with the ACT exam, matter of fact, if you are thinking about taking the ACT, uh, this video is gonna apply uh, to you as well. But I wanna talk about how to organize a study plan and what should be your first step. And I think a lot of students overlook this. Matter of fact, um, let me ask you the question, what do you think should be your first thing, the first step you should take when you're getting ready for the SAT or ACT math section in terms of a study plan. Now, uh, I'll kind of leave this as an open-ended question. I don't want to give you too many uh, suggestions or hints because I want to give you an opportunity to uh, give your personal answer because what works for you uh, may work uh, may not work for someone else and vice versa. So this is going to be my opinion on what should be your first step, but I think it's going to be uh, pretty good uh, guidance for uh, those of you out there that are getting ready to take the SAT or ACT. As you well know, these uh, test scores have major implications uh, for your college admissions. So anyways, we're going to get into this in just one second. Also, if you need math help with a current math course you are taking, uh, test prep, uh, obviously, I'm um, going to be talking about the SAT math section here. I have a great SAT math prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description uh, below. And if you happen to be homeschooling, it can help you out with that as well. So just go to my math site, uh, tcmathacademy.com. I'm going to leave uh, all the links in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and first, let's just kind of review uh, the math in, in a real kind of general way that you're gonna to need to know for the SAT. And this is also um, applicable for the ACT. Now there are differences between the two exams, but we'll just kind of um, focus in on the SAT and I'm gonna keep this kind of general. Okay, so what math do you uh, need to know to really be fully prepared for the SAT? Well, the first is uh, Algebra 1, okay? So first year Algebra, and most students take this like in the ninth grade in high school. Let me kind of just make a typical um, uh, way where people take math or kind of a um, an outline here. So here is the ninth grade, most students take Algebra 1, and then in the 10th grade, most students take Geometry, of course there's exceptions, and then 11th grade, most students take Algebra 2, and then in 12th grade, most students take Pre-Calculus, okay? Now, when do most students take the SAT? Well, you're gonna be taking it uh, either at the end of your junior year or in your senior year. So you can see here, if you are, are kind of like on a traditional path, when you start taking the SAT in the 11th grade, uh, if you are taking the um, uh, SAT in your junior year, you have not yet finished Algebra 2, and depending upon uh, your Algebra 2 course that you may uh, be in, you may not be getting everything that you need to know to be fully prepared uh, for the exam. But let's go ahead and just continue with this. So Algebra 1, absolutely, uh, definitely need to know to be ready for the SAT. You'll also need to be strong in high school level geometry. Again, most students should have completed these courses uh, before they even get to the SAT. And it's likely that you probably took the PSAT as well. Um, but anyways, let's get, uh, go ahead and continue on. So Algebra 1 and Geometry, this probably um, makes up the bulk of what's going to be on the SAT. So if you did uh, really well in these courses, that's very, very good. Uh, you're also gonna see some advanced um, algebra, stuff that you're gonna learn in Algebra 2 uh, on the SAT. And uh, you could see some uh, trigonometry, okay? Now, where would you see that trigonometry or where would you study trigonometry? It's kind of uh, typical that most advanced uh, trigonometry is taught within pre-calculus. So if you are taking pre-calculus in your senior year and you're taking the SAT uh, as a junior, you may not have uh, gotten everything that you need. Now you do get some basic trigonometry in geometry. So uh, this is just kind of a, a, a kind of a basic overview 
of where most students take these math courses and what math is going to be on the SAT. Now, here's the deal, right? You don't have to be, um, you know, 100% perfect in all of these categories to still get a very good score on the SAT. But we're going to get into what should be your first step to get ready for SAT or ACT mathematics. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. Now, again, I was curious to see what your feedback would be um, on how you would organize a game plan, right? Now, some of you might say, well, I'm going to go to the store or I'm going to uh, order a book, you know, uh, online, you know, Amazon and get myself a nice Princeton review or there's a ton of great review books. And that's something you should do. But is that the first thing you should be thinking about? Well, I'm going to suggest that this is the first thing that you should be thinking about. So the first step, okay, uh, that you want to take is you really need to kind of get a good inventory of your math skills. All right. So if you have already taken, obviously, Algebra 1, Geometry, maybe Algebra 2, you should uh, kind of think about, all right, how did I do in these courses and what did I do really well in and what did I not do well in? Okay, because... Uh, you're going to want to work on your skills before you start taking SAT practice tests and get into this, uh, the various different strategies, which is important as well, but that shouldn't be your first step. So here's kind of the way I'm going to suggest that you approach it. And I've been um, teaching mathematics for decades. I've also tutored uh, for many, many years SAT, ACT test uh, prep. And I always like to start this way with the students that I've helped is, hey, just make a list of the things you think you're strong in, you know, and you can just write random things. Oh, I'm good at uh, quadratic equations. I know how to graph lines. Oh, I can solve a system of linear equations. Oh, yes, I can solve uh, exponential equations. I can uh, uh, factor, whatever the case is. Now, you might say, oh, I'm weak in uh, whatever category, right? Maybe you're weak in... Uh, polynomial division, right? Or uh, maybe you're weak in trigonometry, or maybe you don't like, you know, the geometry that has to deal with circles and various formulas. Whatever the case is, you yourself should kind of think back on what you had problems with and what you were really good in. Now, um, how could you do this, right? There's a lot of math topics that you need to cover. Well, you could get yourself um, one of those SAT books and just kind of look at the different topics that are going to be on uh, the SAT. That's not a bad way, but what you should have uh, done, and probably most students have not done this, is kept their notes, okay? Kept their test. In other words, when you took Algebra 1 and you, you know, completed that course, you should have uh, had like various chapter tests, right? This information is critical. It's really, really good, um, uh, kind of a record of your performance of what you know and don't know, right? So if you did well on these uh, various uh, chapter tests, but, you know, there was a few that you struggle with, you want to know that in advance, okay? So you kind of look back uh, on your um, test if you kept them or your notes or whatever the case is, or just kind of think through the best way you can. You know, this is not going to be a perfect list, but just, you know, take uh, some time to take the best inventory you possibly can of what you think you know and what you think you're weak in, okay? Now, after you do this, what you want to do is verify your strong areas, right? So I've done this many, many years, and I'll ask a student, okay, hey, what do you know uh, really, really well? Well, I know how to solve equations. I know how to solve uh, quadratic equations and systems and this and that, and I would give them maybe a quiz to kind of check, you know, verify what they're they believe they're strong in, and guess what? Turns out they're not they're not as strong as they think they are, okay? So what you want to do once you make your little inventory list here is to kind of verify uh, those uh, strong areas, those things that you think you're strong in. And, of course, if there's things that you're, you know, not as strong as you thought you are, maybe you want to move those things over to this category where you're a little bit weaker in. OK, so I would always like to verify your strong areas first and then get into your weak areas. Now, uh, you know, you do have time constraints to prepare uh, for the SAT and ACT. I'm not going to go back and be able to relearn all this material, but you do want to get a sense of what you know and don't know. And you want to strengthen as many weak areas as possible. 
Okay. So step number one is to take inventory and work on your skills, right? Strengthen your uh, math skills before you get into test taking strategies and techniques. And that's important as well. So I'm not saying that you um, don't get into how to um, manage a test and the different kind of test formats and the timing and everything else. The, um, that's a whole nother kind of level for SAT and ACT uh, preparation, which you do need to do. But in terms of the first thing you want to do, you want to take inventory because if you, you already just say you skip this step and you start taking practice tests, I've seen this time and time again, there'll be questions on functions and questions on, you know, um, triangles and whatnot. And students can't handle those questions because they they're weak in these um, math skills, right? So what you need to do is go back and strengthen your skills, do a review of all this high school level mathematics, and the earlier you start, the better off, right? So, you know, if you happen to be, you know, in your junior year, or if you're a parent of a uh, student in high school, you want to start as early as possible, okay? And you could just think as their uh, current course material as being a uh, kind of real-time ongoing SAT and ACT preparation because there is a lot of mathematics that will be covered on these exams. But you can definitely, um, you know, work to improve your score for the SAT and ACT. Okay, now, uh, can you get a perfect score? Well, anything's possible, but from the time you have, right before the time you have to take this exam, you can make some dramatic improvements, right? Uh, you know, and really impact uh, your score in a positive level, but you're gonna have to have a good game plan. And again, uh, before you move on to uh, take an actual test, etc., cetera, spend uh, some amount of time taking inventory and strengthening your skills. And this is what uh, I do in my SAT math prep course. It's a huge course. There's no way you're going to be able to complete the entire course, but it's there for you to um, kind of go into those areas where you want to check your, um, you know, your strong skills and then work on your weak areas, right? So this covers pretty much all of high, a good chunk of uh, high school mathematics, certainly the things that you're going to see on the SAT. Okay, so hopefully this little video will help you out and kind of organize a plan. I know this is a daunting thing. Uh, of course, if you're taking the SAT or ACT, you got other things going on, college applications, school, maybe extracurricular activities. So I get it. So you need to really work as efficient as possible in terms of studying uh, so you can get the best results on this exam. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.